You do your best, and Jesus does the rest. Written and read by Brother Jerry Valenti. It's been a day of miracles. After feeding 5,000 men with five loaves and two fishes, Jesus walks on top of the Sea of Galilee to reach the ship of his disciples. He allows Peter to also walk on the water. As soon as Jesus boards the ship, the heavy winds and high waves cease. But there is still one more miracle to occur, and this one is sometimes overlooked because it's recorded in only one of the Gospels. After Jesus boards the ship and the winds and waves die down, immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. John 6, 21. That's right, the ship that was being battered by heavy winds and high waves in the middle of the Sea of Galilee is miraculously transported in an instant to its destination as soon as Jesus comes aboard. Based on this last miracle, another way of describing this voyage is that the disciples do their best to successfully complete the journey, but they're only able to get so far on their own. At that point, Jesus comes aboard and takes them the rest of the way. Now let's liken this journey across the Sea of Galilee to our own journey through life. The destination we want to get to is the Kingdom of Heaven. We can try our best to get there on our own, but we can only get so far before we come up short. As Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But as long as we have Jesus aboard, he then takes us the rest of the way. In order to understand why it's necessary for Jesus to take us the rest of the way, we have to first understand the requirements to reach the kingdom of heaven. Even though some people want to create their own rules, such as just be a good person, or God loves everyone so we'll all be there, the actual entrance requirements are much stricter. In order to qualify, you have to go through your entire life without sinning at all. One sin sinks your boat, and then you'll never make it to that heavenly destination. Based on these strict entrance requirements, none of us, except those who die as babies or small children, can possibly make it to heaven. But that's where the good news comes in. Recognizing that his creation wouldn't be able to make it on their own, God sent his son to die on the cross, thereby creating a way for our sins to not count against us. In other words, Jesus came to take us the rest of the way. This act of taking you the rest of the way is what's known as the grace of God. When you repent of your sins and are baptized, you receive the grace of God. Your sin counter is reset to zero, and you receive the Holy Ghost to help you avoid future sins. Of course, as long as we're human, we're still not perfect, so we will make mistakes from time to time. But even then, we can seek the Lord's forgiveness and continue on toward our destination. His grace continues to take us the rest of the way. Sometimes I like to express this concept with numbers, since math was my favorite subject in school. If a score of 10 is needed to qualify for the kingdom of heaven, and the best you can do is a score of 7, then, through the grace of God, Jesus adds the other three to get you to ten. If the best you can do is four, then Jesus adds the other six, and so on. You do your best, and Jesus does the rest. However, it's important to not overlook the first part of that statement. You have to do your best. If the best you can do is a score of seven, and you intentionally decide to indulge in a little sin that lowers your score to four, it would be very questionable unless you repent with great sincerity that God would provide bonus points to cover your intentional sinning. As long as you're doing your best, which does allow for human shortcomings, then Jesus will do the rest, and you will reach your desired destination through the grace of God. So, just as the disciples couldn't get across the Sea of Galilee without the help of Jesus, neither can we make it through life and get to the paradise of God on our own. If you haven't already done so, repent of your sins and be baptized. Follow the Holy Ghost to the best of your ability to avoid sin and do what God wants you to do. Continue in this way for the rest of your life, enduring to the end. But understand that even after you do all of the above, it will only be by the grace of God that you are saved. You will have done your best, but Jesus will have done the rest. We know that it is by grace that we are saved after all we can do. 2 Nephi 25, 23